Hey, everybody. Welcome to Live from the Bunker with Eddie Pepitone. Here's my theme song. We are all, all of us, in the same boat. And it's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. I'm in this bunker. I think you can see it's a real bunker. I don't get any exercise. A lot of people are exercising indoors. I refuse. I refuse to exercise. Hey, everybody. How are you? Um, I always do a little voiceover on that uh, introduction. <clears throat> I think it's very uh, high production value when you hear music and then I'm doing uh, voiceover. I think you guys uh, deserve that kind of thing. Um, now, today's guest is amazing. He has, He had a show on Comedy Central playing Donald Trump. He does Donald Trump. Alec Baldwin gets to do Donald Trump. But it's hard. It, it doesn't even compare to my guest, which uh, my guest today is Tony, um, Tony Atamanuk. I always fuck up his name. Tony Atom- Anthony Atamanuk. Anthony Atamanik. Anthony Atamanik. Anthony Atamanik. Anthony Atomic, he is amazing and so funny. And he's a New York guy like me. I'm a New York guy, but I'm stuck here in L.A. Now, New York is kind of the epi. It is the epicenter of the pandemic. But now it's spreading. Do you see how it's spread? It's spreading to New Orleans and uh, Detroit hot spots, they call it. By the way, I'm already sick of the fucking new, you know, I'm already, I I was really, it's it's like tragedy porn, right? It's tragedy porn if you're watching the news. It's just like, oh God, uh, who died? Who died? Anthony is in Queens, by the way. Anthony um, uh, Atomanik. Anthony Atomanik is in Queens, by the way. If I just keep saying his name, um, <laughs> I'll get it. But um, he's coming on very shortly. Um, let's see. We're up to 100,000 cases or more uh, here in the United States. Again, Anthony's in Queens, so he'll be able to give us a front line report um, from New York. Uh, here I am in L.A. By the way, it's gorgeous. It's been gorgeous in L.A. I think that's partly uh, due to the lack of cars on the road. Um, so the sky has been beautiful. And you just go outside and you're like, where's the pandemic, man? Where's the pandemic? But it's here. It sneaks up on you with piano wire. Um Some good news. The UK right wing douchebag Boris Johnson has the coronavirus. Um, I think he I think Johnson, uh, Boris Johnson, the uh, UK version of Trump, even though nobody can nobody can touch our guy, Donald. He's such a great guy. Um, uh, So anyway, he's got it. He said. Ah, the coronavirus, no big deal. Well, now he's got it. Bill Gates today came up, uh, came up with a prediction. Uh, not a prediction. You know, he said the lockdown. They asked Gates, how long do you think this will last? And one thing about Bill Gates is that he um, he has access to computers. So he made the prediction of uh, 10 weeks at a minimum. Could you imagine doing this for 10 weeks? I don't know. It's just a lot, you know. I mean, really, we're be, we're becoming an online online culture, you know, which has its advantages, I guess. Um, everybody's staying in. Everybody's telling me to watch uh, Tiger King on Netflix, I, and my friend Bill said it doesn't show abuse of animals, so I might watch it. Um, I know Ozark started today. These are the important things, not not the fact that. Um, there's been a corporate coup d'etat 
in our country. And uh, this uh, $2 trillion stimulus bill, um, was it $2 trillion? I, was it even more than I mean, the money, the money you can't even, uh, you can't even, you can't even uh, imagine, you know, except I know it'll, it'll go to corporations. I love the $1,200 thing that, um, you know, some of us are supposed to get 1200 bucks, like, woo, 1200 bucks. That should take me through. Um, Joe Biden accused of sexual assault by a former staffer. This happened, yeah, today, I think. Surprise, the mainstream media hasn't picked up this story because they, they, you know, they want Biden, another corporate water boy. You know, they teamed up against Bernie. And uh, the only way we're going to change this government, I think everybody knows, is to get in the streets once the pandemic is over. Those of us still alive. Um, I also heard that Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan released a 17 minute song about the JFK assassination. How timely is that? How timely is it to release a 17-minute song about JFK? Um, you know, thank you, Bob, for that. Um, maybe you could release a 17-minute song about the fact that uh, 90, uh, what is it, the top 0.01% own you know, half the country's wealth. Maybe you could release um, a story, you know, a song on that, Bobby, instead of the JFK. I, I haven't heard it yet. I, I love Dylan. I mean, I absolutely love Bob Dylan. But um, <laughs> someone said 16 minutes longer than it should have been. <laughs> oh, my God. And and uh, my buddy Matt said... Uh, uh, all right, we're going to bring Anthony. My buddy Matt said too soon. Uh, they too soon. All right, we're going to get uh, uh, Anthony on. People, people, send questions to me and Tony. To hey, me and Tony. there he is. How's it there going, Eddie? Anthony. <laughs> What's Anthony, happening? Anthony, my fellow New Yorker. I'm here in Queens. I'm here in the epicenter of the epicenter. <laughs> yes, hydrate. I'm so glad. It's such a it's such a great thing to see you hydrating. A lot of people have been asking, uh, is uh, Atomic hydrating? And uh, am I pronouncing yes. it right? Atomic? It's Atomic, but that's okay. Atomic. I like Atomic. No, Atomic. And you look great, by the way. Oh, this dude. pandemic is doing wonders for you. <laughs> Well, you know, the pandemic has inspired me to go on a regimen of hats, yes. hats and headphones, and <laughs> I just, I just feel good. I, I feel good. You know, uh, people around me are dropping like flies, yes. and uh, I, yeah, and I'm a good guy, you know, because this, the pandemic and all crisis brings out the good in people, and I just, I see people fall on the streets. And I yell, I say, are you okay? It's a little freeze up here. Yeah, I know, I saw on. that. I saw yeah, that. Yeah. Did, did you hear me? Are I didn't you hear okay? the last part. Ah, oh, God, it was so good. I, it was I, a good punchline, and it, it, the, 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 the web destroyed it. <laughs> tell us about New York. Is it fucked up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny because you were talking about the blue sky. So one thing I've noticed, just to start with that, is that the skies have been beautiful because there's no flights really going out of That's LaGuardia right. or JFK. That's right. The, so, the airlines aren't flying. Yeah. No, the airs. You know, the only two times I can re remember this are the two days after nine eleven, but unfortunately, you had that. You know, you had that stink. That sort of combination of plastic and you know, yeah. dead bodies, and yeah. then the blackout. Uh, was the other time because all the transformers were silent, right? Because the transformers were shut off. So the actual hum that you don't even regard, like you don't even know exists until right. you turn that hum off, the the silence, right? So this is, of course, you know, the energy grids up, but the clarity and the uh, quietness, there's no traffic. Um, and so where I am, without giving away my full 
address yeah. uh, is I'm only a 15 minute walk from the Elmhurst hospital. Oh so my God. We are truly, you know, Whoa. in the epicenter and you can tell, here's what I'll, I'll say is that mm-hmm. uh, one, I, you know, I'm uh, a prepper. Are you, you know, I mean, in the sense that I'm not a prepper, like a, like a, I'm always prepped, but like when I see something coming down the pike, I'm on it very early. So I think I got on it March 1st. So I had my cans, bags of rice, beans. I ordered water filtration pills. Is that right? Uh, you know, oh, yeah. Three rolls of duct tape, extra, a couple of knives to tape to baseball bats if I needed to, blackout curtains for the front window. Just thinking of the different stages, sort of what Bill <laughs> Gates is talking about. <laughs> what, what are the yeah. stages, yeah. right? So, mm-hmm. and we are so far on what I perceive were the stages, which is, you know, everyone was casual for the first two weeks, right? Going yeah. out to stores, hanging out, doing their thing. Yeah. Now you got the dummies. So the big thing is, because we're taking care of my, my uh, in-law's uh, dog, uh, Lulu. Yeah. So I have to walk Lulu three times a day. So now it's like Tetris. I have to, I cross the street four or five times in one block. I won't even go near oh, anyone. I won't okay. go near anyone. But people are out lingering uh, okay. with masks and uh, gloves on. So you have a very small population of people who are dumb enough to be out. My favorite is all the maid guys in the, at the Italian deli, you know, because we live in a protected neighborhood. All the maid guys <laughs> are still hanging out together at this deli. And I went across the street. I mean, at the bakery, I went across the street to the deli because I had to get olive oil and capers. So it was my one out. I like bought everything and somehow forgot olive oil and capers, which are pretty key to making food. So I went into the deli and I saw I trusted that place because it's all, you know, family owned. I those guys, they know what they're doing, right? Cerritos Deli. It's one of the best in the country. Italian? Uh, Italian Deli. Cerritos Pork Store is what it's called. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. right across from the bakery place. So I go in there. Right. And I love it. The guys behind the counter go, the fucking mob guys are all hanging out with each other out in the block. They're all going to kill each other from COVID. We're going to have no one to protect us. <laughs> and so, and, and so <laughs> you know, what you've noticed is that Mm-hmm. It's just getting um, where you see discarded gloves and masks, like on the oh, sidewalk and I stuff. I started seeing me and my wife walking our dog. You know, we have to go out also, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, a couple times a day. And um, I'm seeing gloves. I'm seeing discarded yeah. gloves yeah. Yeah. on the streets. And I'm thinking, who the fuck yeah. is yeah. doing that? People who are pigs, Listen, yeah. let me say, people are fucking pigs. And if there's anything I hope this virus does yeah. is every selfish asshole who went out for St. Patty's Day or went down to Florida after the warning or flew to California or went every one of those fuckers. And, yeah. and I'll, I will forgive the, the Mardi Gras people because they sort of were there at a time when no one was yeah. really percolating about this yet. Yeah. I mean, if you really were, had your ear to the ground. Because I checked my text threads. My wife and I started writing about this on January 15th. So like, oh, yeah, I'm very because I'm a conspiracy minded person. So if I see Mm. virus in China, I I just go, okay. so what what, what's that all about? What are they hiding? This is clearly worse than they're letting on. Yeah. And not to this isn't like a Chinese virus monologue where it's, you know, yeah. like some but it's just that's true. It's a totalitarian state. They're going to hide their shit because they don't they don't want to look weak. So um, mm-hmm. anyway, so uh, but all those people went out in March. I hope I, I, yeah. wish I could see the look on their eyes when someone goes, <laughs> no, we're going to give this respirator to somebody else. And then so I yeah. could lean over. They're dying right as they're dying. And I could go, was it worth it? To go to Sally McFucking <laughs> Ireland's for that party was it? Oh. You dying thirty-year-old mess. I thought by St. Patrick's Day everything had been closed down. No, people went out the weekend that weekend before St. Oh, Patrick's because right. Cuomo and De Blasio sort of had their thing going back and forth over the weekend. Everyone went out Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Uh. I took a bike ride. Uh, 
because I'm still running and biking because you're in the street. So you're not really near anybody, you know, like right. when I run, I run in the street and I true, I've lost eight pounds since. since the That's start. interesting. <laughs> That's interesting because, uh, yeah. Um, I, I find it kind of the opposite, you know, I'm, I, I mean, there, I'm inside a lot. So I'm, I'm like, ah, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. I, and yeah. I have these incredible shells, large shell pasta yes. and, yeah. uh, I love large shells and I shouldn't yeah. have got them. I, I got way too many yeah. large shells. I mean, you could well, barely open up, uh, my apartment door. I have so <laughs> many large shells. For you like know. a manicot, for like a, a managotti, like a managot, like. Ah, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to throw Italian words at me. I, managot? No. <laughs> what are you, what is your ethnicity, by the way? You live in an I, Italian area. I didn't know Elmos was so, uh, uh, Italian. Well, it's a weird mix of Italian, Croatian, and Greek. Ah. That's sort of Astoria. And then you oh, got, yeah. you know, South Asian and, you know, you have a sort of uh, a bleed of, of different groups that are all intersecting. I am Ukrainian, Lithuanian, and Italian. You, my wife is Lithuanian. So you're yeah. Ukrainian, Lithuanian, and Italian. Ah. Yeah. yeah. But the Italian is the dominant force in my upbringing. So oh, me too. Me too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My dad's so. Sicilian, and oh, yeah. uh, my mom, Jewish. And, yeah, uh, the Jewish you know, is the Lithuanian part. Jewish Lithuania. <laughs> so Jewish mother, grandmother, Lithuanian. That's, that's why me and you connect. That's why Jewish me and Italian. You. I steal things on sale. <laughs> I I bargain with you before I kill you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's what they used to say uh, when I worked at the Mob Run Pizza Joint. And that's the other thing because I worked for a lot of you know always worked in Italian sort of you know mobby places and so yeah. i waited tables at john's pizza you know you waited tables of... at john's pizza oh yeah for six years for those who don't know john's pizza in new york city i mean i don't know if it still has this rep but it was considered the best pizza it, it is the best pizza it still is yeah. huh it's still the best i mean ble bleaker is still the best because the oven is uh the, i mean the oven's got to be 115 years old now and so the age of the oven and the heat it generates is what makes the pie. I mean, I, this is like, you know. <laughs> you know they, your this pizza. This is in my brain. You know right? your like, pizza. Yeah, because it's the high heat with the, the, the uh, what, you know, they call the flavoring, right? The, the seasoning of the stove. So that the stove is seasoned for over 100 years and it's 6,000 oh. degrees in there. So that's what gets you that crisp, sharp pie where the cheese and everything's melted, but there's no sag, right? And that pizza stands up. And that's what you want is you want that pie to stand straight like that. Right. Yeah, but it yeah. shouldn't be burned. And that's the hard thing. That's why wood fired pizza always sort of has that harder crisp on top. Right. But then soft sag at the bottom. Right. That's because it can't get the right temperature. And I also that job, I used to bring money to a guy named the Bishop. <laughs> and so I would bring it a Dunkin Donuts bag. And only later on did I realize I was a bag man. And my nickname was Tony Bag of Donuts. And I would Are bring. You I'm very serious. Yeah, I can say it now because I think most of everyone's dead now. But uh, <laughs> I knew all the cops. You know, I knew all the cops. I knew every chief of police in New York City. From John. Oh yeah, I had a yeah. gold PVA card. I could not get arrested. Like I would, I get caught busted for smoking pot in the street, and I would either show them the card or one time I was cuffed. So this was on yeah. Ledlow. And I was smoking a joint. Oh, that's funny because I got I got busted there as well. Oh, they hang out there. Oh, I didn't even know that. Me and my friend uh, Peter, I can mention his name now because he's very ill with the virus. I don't think he's going to make it. Me and my friend Peter. <laughs> By the way, joking about the virus, I don't think is in good taste. But if it... neither do I, but I think it's great. I think it's <laughs> it is right. Um, <laughs> Even if I get it, even if I get it, and um, yeah, I mean, me and my wife are we're building our own uh, ventilator. It's a YouTube yeah. video. I don't know if you oh, see. Yeah. yeah, they tell, yeah. they show you how to build a ventilator on YouTube. No, they don't really. <laughs> no. Come on. Obviously, they. I mean, there probably is some because I would I would imagine it has something to do with like a vacuum cleaner and sort of like reversing the flow back and forth. <laughs> I believe you could do it even with an old fireplace bellows. 
there's got to be a way to do a ventilator. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, you were Peter and you got busted on Ludlow. Oh, yeah. Um, m- me and my buddy, uh, we were in a sketch group. And, you know, I don't know about you, but when I first started doing comedy, I mean, the reason I, I keep doing comedy, I, I, I don't make a lot of money doing it. But the reason why I've never stopped doing it is because of the adrenaline rush. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. such an adrenaline rush. And yes. when I when I first started doing it in New York, I absolutely um, after we did our set. You know, and it was a three person sketch group. I, I would, I'd be so wound up that I would smoke, uh, pot afterward. Yeah. And we had, even it out. Yeah. We had this, I'm sober now for years, but we, we had, um, this black hash (laughs) that we got from somebody and we made a makeshift aluminum foil pipe and we yeah. see these two guys we're on a bench on Ludlow and we see these two guys walking toward us they have baseball caps on and we just keep smoking and then they walk right up undercovers to yeah and they yeah. threw out their badges and we were like oh shit and before we knew it we were both handcuffed in the back of uh, 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 a police car you yeah. know yeah well I and, got uh, yeah yeah it, well I got well, two. I'll give you two different Ludlows then. So this Ludlow, I was just a little. Uh, I don't know if I'd come off a of comedy. No, this was pretty. Or yeah, I come off a comedy show and I was smoking a a, a, a joint and I mm-hmm. pulled a hit and I turned to the right and blew it out. Yeah, and I blew it right in the police van, like right <laughs> in the window of a police van, and I heard the cop go, "You got to be kidding me, right?" So he gets out. And they go, hey, hey. And I turn around. And I was with some friends who were visiting me from Boston. And they were, we were all going to another bar. And they mm-hmm. go, hey, you, you, come here, come here. And I go, what, what, what? And they go, you just, you know, hit, you know, you just blew pot. And my thing was always with the cops was, well, why bother lying? Because mm-hmm. I'm nailed, right? So I went, yeah, I was smoking a joint. I'm sorry. And they go, okay, well. You know, you're under arrest. And, I'm like, you gotta be. and I went, you got to be kidding me. I went, you got to be kidding me, right? They went, no, you're under arrest. It's illegal. So they pull out my weed. They put it on the ground. They pull out my joint, throw it on the ground, lighter. And I had these homeopathic pills, andrographis root, which is really good for antiviral now. Actually. What's it called? They used it, andrographis root. They actually mm-hmm. used it in the 1918 flu epidemic. Oh, also, shit. it's a Chinese herb. Uh, that's supposed to be an antiviral. Uh, and it, there's a product you could buy called Cold Care, or it's listed as Canjang. It's now listed as Cold Care with K. Oh, yeah. 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 And so I had a packet of Cold Care pills, too. So I'm cuffed up against the wall. My friends from Boston, who are all provincial, so they're all like, you know, panicked at what's happening. And they go, what are these pills? These weed pills? And I turned to the cop and I went, if I had weed pills, why would I be smoking the joint on the street? And the other cop goes, he's got a point. He's got a point. And I go, please go in my wallet. Please go in my wallet. Uh, I know Richie. I know Richie. He used to be the CEO of this this department. Uh, how do you know Richie? How do you know Richie? I go, just open my wallet. And they open my wallet. Richie was Bloomberg's guy, his body guy. So, How long ago was this, by the way? This had to be 2004, maybe. 2004 okay. Okay, yeah. and uh, three or four. Yeah. And uh, they go, well, he's got Richie's card. They go, if we call Richie right now, will he know who you are? And I go, yeah. And they go, describe him. I go, six foot one. Everyone calls him Mr. Clean. Nice guy. Totally bald. Right. He's got a kind of a big nose. And they go, we're going to tell Richie you said that. And I go, that's fine. <laughs> they call up and they go, they, they talk for a second. I'm cuffed against the wall. Oh and they go, hey, Richie wants to talk to you. And they put the phone up to my ear. And Richie goes, you dumb motherfucker. You dumb motherfucker. He goes, you're so lucky. These guys used to work for me. They're going to let you go. But you better give them a free pie next Wednesday and the Wednesday after that. And I went, sure. You got whatever you want, Richie. And he goes, all right. And I go, thank you. Thank you. He's like, shut up. Shut up. Hang up. They uncuff me. They put all my paraphernalia yeah. on the sidewalk. And they go, we're going to turn around. Whatever's not here, when we turn back around, we never saw. And I pick everything up, 
put it all in my pockets. They turn around. They go, we'll see you next week. Sure enough, that next Wednesday, they walk right into the restaurant. Hey, how you doing? I went, oh, hey, guys. Gave them free pizza. You saw them, you saw them right after that? They in- came in for the payoff. The payoff was they got free dinner for two Wednesdays at John's. <laughs> and they took me up on it. That is hilarious. Yeah. That is hilarious. So I got out of that. Uh, and then the other Ludlow is just very short, which was I had two friends. This mm-hmm. was very early, like 99 in New York. And there used yeah. to be a club on Ludlow right as you uh, hit Houston, right? The block before. And it was like a mm-hmm. downstairs club. It yeah. was on the the the, the uh, west side of the street, heading a little further north. And it was like a downstairs place. So I had two friends telling me, meet me there. And everyone was doing coke at the time, right? And they go, we're going to get some cocaine and we'll all go to Jeffrey's rooftop. And I don't do any of that shit anymore. But like, you know, at the time I did. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. and so I go, uh, okay, I'll meet you guys. And this was in the era of cell phones, right? 99, but like bad signal and everything. And so I'm on the phone with this kid, Nathan, who's no longer with us. And, uh, yeah, he never, he didn't, you know, he didn't get out. You know what I mean? So he just, his body gave in. Uh, and Nathan says to me, but sweet guy, Nathan goes, Hey man, Hey man, we're down in the bathroom. Just come meet us down there, man. The club is really pumping and then we'll get out of here. And I went, okay, Nathan. And I hung up the phone and I'm walking up the street and I see all these cars there's like all these crown victorias everywhere parked everywhere up and down the street and i go wow there's a lot of livery cabs here and then in one shot every car opens it's a massive bust of this club there's like 40 cops and i try to call and i'm going hey i go they're about to bust this place because i'm outside and so i'm going they're about to bust the place to get out get out nathan's like what what i go get out of there and you see them all compiling in, and Nathan just slips out past them, right? <laughs> just slips out past them right as they're going in. Holy and shit. And runs down the block, and they raided the place and shut it down. What, anyway. Did they raid it because it was a coke haven? It was a coke haven. Like, why did they it raid was, it? It was, it was a coke haven. And in oh. fact, I watched some, I can't remember now, but it was some documentary on New York and they actually featured that place. And I was like, that's the place that got shut down by for life. You could, could, what was the name of it? Could not tell you anything. This was 99. It was, I, you know, it wasn't like I regularly went. 99. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, no, go on, go on. Hey, Hey man, I, I, you know, what, no, no, I um, I just wanted a. Uh, did you hear that Dylan released a seventeen-minute song about JFK? I just looked it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me, did you see it? Up. Well, I looked it up. I mean, I murder most foul. Um, oh shit! Is it new? It's it's it, well. It, apparently, he recorded it sometime. It's an unreleased song that they return that, oh. that was recorded a while back. Stay safe, stay observant, which means it was sometime between maybe 20, 2006, 2012. Oh, well, oh okay. Uh, here's some of his incisive and cutting lyrics. What oh, you got a pussy cat? What I say, I said the soul of a nation been torn away and it's beginning to go into a slow <laughs> decay. And that it's and that it's 36 hours past judgment day. I don't know. Unless that 17 minutes right. has, uh, you know, clear. I'm a huge Dylan um, guy. I, I, I just want a second gunman. I just want to know, unless his song <laughs> has compelling evidence about the Kennedy assassination, I don't care. Well, I knew, I knew Earl Warren. I knew Earl Warren from John's Pizza. And Warren used to come in at John's Pizza. You know, I'm kidding. Um, the Warren Report. <laughs> hey. I wish Dylan, can you hear me? Anthony? Oh, you're kind of freezing up there. Can you hear me? How is your internet connection? How is your internet connection? Um, yeah, so I knew Earl, Earl, Earl Warren, not from John. 
Okay. Yeah, you know, because um, you're kind of freezing on my end, and and the sound is going a little. Yeah, yeah. Um, the virus got thirty. Um, what I want to say, I wish That's Dylan would write a connection. song about Trump. Okay, hold on. Oh, you have. Oh, there. You, that's better. Uh, the light sucks, but oh, there we go. There you are. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. We. Oh, better, 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 better. <laughs> it's yeah. nice to get a, a little tour of your domicile. Oh my uh, God! If this this room is a mess. The the only thing I'll show you is just these beautiful green. Ooh, lovely, lovely. What are you? Are you growing basil? <laughs> Yeah, no, these are supposed, we, well, when we got these, it was supposed to be to purify the air in the room because these yeah. plants are supposed to clean air in the room. And then my wife read an article oh, and goes, it turns out that the study was bullshit. These don't do anything to clean the fucking air. You need like two, you need like 10 tons of them to even make a tent. So now we just have a bunch of fucking plants for no reason. <laughs> well, being surrounded by life is nice. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, do you ever? You know, when I was living in New York, did, did you do you ever go to the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens? Oh yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's I, nice, right? I also I love the Brooklyn Botanical, but you know what I love mm -hmm. even better is the Bronx Botanical. I don't think I've been to the. Oh, maybe I the, have. The Bronx Botanical is like out of. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like out of something from. Uh, Avalon or like time wow. after time, you know, it's this, the architecture is, is, is uh, just a very singular period of like late 18th century, early 19th century, that sort of really crafted white uh, 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 shaped iron. And, oh, the, I mean, the, if you did the Bronx Zoo and the Bronx Botanicals, there's like, that's no better than hit Arthur Avenue in the in-between. That would be like the best day you could have in New York, you know? Yeah, yeah, Or yeah. Queen Science Park, too. Queen Science. I don't know I'm a, that one. I love, listen, I've, I'm from Boston originally. I was born and raised in Chelsea, Massachusetts, okay? Oh, oh, you see yeah. so New York. When did you well, move I lived, to New York? I moved in 99, 90, 21 years I've lived here. Oh, okay. But I, but I baked into this place very quickly. My wife is a native New Yorker. So that uh, might have some influence. Yeah. But I also, I baked in, you know, quick. I, I'll say, I mean, working you know, at John's, getting to know all the cops. You know. Yeah, and Giuliani. I mean, that was, I was his waiter. Is that I right? was his waiter at John's. God, what a prick Son he of a turned bitch. out to be. What a prick he turned out to be. He turned, you know, it's such a, it's, it's so depressing to me too, because when I knew him, he was a prick. But he was like, um, you know, you could fuck with him. Like he, he was, he had a sense of humor about himself. And you know, in the 2004 primary, he stumped for Bush in Manchester at the El Taqueria, um, which right. was, if I remember you, when we remember when we all, man, I met you the first time. Uh, I think was, did it I meet? No, I didn't meet you in Manchester. I met you in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, in Los Even Angeles. though I'm surprised that we didn't cross paths in New York at some point. Like in that. New York, was so uh, uh, Giuliani let me, I used to do a, a, a cable access show called Captain Conspiracy and Friend on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Oh, I remember I the worked. Manhattan Neighborhood Network. <laughs> yeah. And was I that Robin Bird? Night. Was that Robin Bird? No, she was Channel 35. Oh, okay. Which yeah, was its own separate porn advertising. But this yeah. was, I mean, yeah. Eminem had porn on it. But I was a, a guy who wore a captain's hat, a Van Dyke beard, and a medallion. And the story was my wife was trapped in the medallion. And I was broadcasting from uh, the, uh, uh, a ship in international waters. And I would take calls and I would just Im improvise answers to conspiracy theories, right? And that was the show. And so I went to the primaries with my friend Mary, who was my producer, and I wrote, I asked Giuliani one time at John's, I said, hey, if, yeah. if I come up, can I ask you a question as like my character? And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. What do I care, right? So we're at this like George Bush event with like Chris Matthews and C Wolf Blitzer, all these reporters, and then there's me in a fake beard, a Van Dyke beard and a hat, 
And he points to me of all these reporters and goes, you over there, you uh, captain. And I go, yeah, yeah, oh, captain shit. conspiracy. And I asked him a legit question that I don't think he wanted me to ask him a legit question. I uh, you asked wanted him, it to be funny to show that he's a human being. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. And instead, I asked him like a really pressing question about what cat like was he angling for a cabinet position for the second term, Bush's second term. And he was pissed. He was like pissed at the question. Hey, what? And, <laughs> and oh, Chris Matthews, funny. he came up to me afterwards and goes, what outfit are you with? And I said, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And he goes, is that your real beard? And I was like, no. I was like, it's a fake beard. I go, what? I'm a comic. What are you talking about? So it really bummed me out what happened to him because at least he at one point had a sense of humor about himself, you know? Uh, yeah. and, but not, I mean, he's a piece of shit. Um, oh, man, did he turn out? I mean, you know, representing. Hey, uh, yeah. before you go, I got I, I got you yeah. have to answer a question in character as Trump. Can you do that? OK, for me? Sure, right, Mr. Sure. President, Mr. President, we heard that you really love the Easter holiday. Uh, yes. What do you usually get in your Easter basket? Well, first off, we love Easter and I love it so much because, it's, you know, all the children are on the lawn and they're chasing the eggs and we love the eggs. We love the bunny and the bunny stands. One of the times I get to see Melania now in my basket, what would I want in my basket? Of course, is a cure. I want a cure to this virus that this attack does. And it's terrible. But if I could get anything else than that, if I could get, I would have a little candy pussy, little candy pussy, and I could eat it up, and it would be so tasty, and it would taste, and they've done it, the science is there, because Goop has a candle that smells like Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina, so they can make pussy candy, and it would taste so delicious. But here's the point. I want a cure to the virus. I want a cure to the virus. Where is that? Oh, I don't have it. I want a cure to the virus. Mm -hmm. And what do I want for Easter? I want Jesus to come back. And Carly Fiorina, I don't know if you've heard this, but we're replacing the Easter egg hunt this year with fetal body parts from Planned Parenthood. And the children are going to assemble. You each find like an arm or a head or a leg. And then you do <laughs> make your own fetus. And whoever makes the freakiest fetus wins Easter. And that's that's what I have to say. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. President. Anthony, You're welcome. <laughs> Anthony, you are the best, man. So you and Adomian, they fucked Bernie. They yeah, fucked they fucked Bernie. Bernie big time. Yeah. But I knew that was happening. I me think too. people really got frustrated with me because I would be like, guys, your dream ain't going to happen. And everyone would be like, how can you say that? And I'm like, listen, I support Bernie. But yeah. that's not going to happen. I've been on the planet long enough yeah. to know that it, it ain't happening. It, um, it hasn't happened. There's because, the, like you said earlier, the direness, you know, I said in the last show, when we're reaching it, which is that the comfort, mm -hmm. we're all, a lot of us are members of the comfort class, right? Absolutely. A lot of us, me, we're all the company, yeah. like you said, hey, I, I, this uh, is coming out and we're watching this and we're ordering this and we're eating that. I know, I know. And until our comfort is threatened to a degree that presses right. on our ability to survive or, or to even enjoy our lives at the level we want it to, when that volume, when that threshold is reached, maybe this thinking will have a shot. My personal belief is if Trump tries to turn parts of the country back on, this is if there's any time there were primed for a national strike, it's now everyone's already home. So right. I say, let's do it. it. It requires no effort. You're already home. You probably already lost your job. Let's show this capitalist country that yeah. our dollars matter. And if we don't spend and if we don't work, that's why they're panicking. They're panicking because every day this happens. Should, should remind everybody we have the power we have the power that's why they're panicking because they see how when the workforce stops mm. they can't make money that's and i right. think that message is being lost that this fear they have is not about the economy crashing it's about revealing that the mass of the people are actually the ones who control the economy and control the direction of the country that's my serious point 
Yeah, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Well, listen, man, I love you. You have a new Thank book you. called American Tantrum. Is I that do, correct? yes. American Tantrum, the Donald J. Trump Presidential Archive. And I'm reading it on Twitter. Every Almost every night I read a new chapter. There's an audio oh, book or you can buy the book. Yeah. So Awesome. Awesome, check it out. Thank you for having me Thanks. on, Eddie. I, yeah. sorry I went over. I miss you. Oh, no, it's I great it. to see you. Yeah, great to see you. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. We'll see you All right, see you thanks. Soon. Bye. See ya. All right, everybody. That was the great Anthony uh, Atomic. Um Man, he is so funny. Check him out. And he, he's been reading his book, American Tantrum, on Twitter every night. Super, super duper uh, funny guy. Him and James Adomian do um, Trump versus Bernie uh, debates. If you haven't seen them, they are amazing. Um, all right, look, my bunker's falling apart. I think you can see it up there. Um, uh, remember, uh, if you want to uh, donate to the podcast, it's uh, my Venmo is up in the uh, bio here on Instagram. It's uh, at Edward Pepitone. And uh, I have a Ko-Fi account too that you could donate. And uh, next week, um, I will see you Monday through Friday again. Um, we have some great guests again. Um, so everybody, thanks a lot. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next week.